What time is it? 7.05. Thank you. You're all set. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I'm Mitch Goldblatt. I'm going to call the re special meeting of the Orange Recycling Committee to order. It is Wednesday, April 28th, 2021, and it's about 7.06 p.m. And we'll have um, the people on the call introduce themselves. I'll start with Mark and Eileen. Mark Moyer. Eileen Moyer. Loretta Smith. Patrick Legault. Wendy Novick. Hi, I'm Karen Della Justina. And we have one person from the public, Susan. Hi, Susan Wineland. Still from the public, huh? Still from the public. <laughs> from the public. Yeah. <laughs> All right. A lot All of right. us. Miss Public, do we have any public input? <laughs> um, I think just um, I have a, a couple of quick questions. One has to do with companies that use um, largely recycled materials, whether somebody on the committee, you in the past have put together a list of those companies um, so that people who might be interested in purchasing from them know that they are a green company. We have, um, in the past at least, refrained from trying to quote unquote endorse any company, not knowing their products. Uh -huh. uh, we like to tell people about products that are either from recycled materials or help recycle, you know, materials and and things like that, but without really looking like we're endorsing any particular company or product. But we do like to spread the news. I know Wendy's been great about that. Um, and Loretta's put some of those things in the um, in the newspapers at times too. Right. I see more and more companies are involved that way, which is great. Um, and then just on behalf of my friends, my uh, family and myself, just a few, um, uh, let's see, I'll start with the bags, with plastic bags. This kind of type of bag can be recycled with plastic. Is don't believe, don't believe so. Uh, no. That kind of bag has a coating on it. It's not the, um, I forget the number, <laughs> but it's not the same kind of, we had right. that question come up before with that kind of coated bag. So the answer is, I don't believe so, no. Okay, yeah, some of these are, are, are tricky. So we're, we're, you know, we have more and more vegetables and things coming in. This kind of, it doesn't have the same coating. Same kind of problem, the crunchy, crunchy kind of bags, no, but let, if you're gonna, if the next thing you pull up is a celery or carrot bag, which is pretty much just plastic, those are usually good, as long as they're clean. Okay, yeah, so as long as it doesn't, cr if it doesn't crunch, it's good. Pretty much so. It's okay. hard to, it's this a, doesn't really, well, this crunches a little, it's a, it's a coffee bean bag. Same problem. I think that one has a foil lining, right? The foil lining is definitely not. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so this is are, this is tricky. Are the ones that are foil lined? Can they go in the regular recycling? No. 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 Pretty, pretty much. Pretty much out in the trash. So any of this type, this had lemons, for example. This cannot also cannot go also with plastic bags. You're trying to stump me. I don't know now. <laughs> Only because you know there's so I many. I don't. Th I don't think so. Quite frankly. Uh, yeah, and I don't want to contaminate, you know, right. no one does, the, the plastic bag um, area. So, um, and just to just to be sure, um, so I assume that the, that's a no for all of those. That's a shame because that's a lot of waste. Yeah, I, Eileen wants to say something, Eileen. Yeah. You do know about the website called RecycleCT.com? Because you can put in what the item is, you just type in what the item is, and it tells you what where or if it's recyclable. And if it's nope. not one that's already in their database, they may add it. The only problem with that is RecycleCT is looking for things that go in the blue bin, 
and none of those will go in the blue bin, any kind of plastic. Right. So I'm not sure that's going to give you the best guidance. It's been hard to find the um, information out about yeah. these kinds of bags, of, of which our stores are full. I mean, especially yep. even the produce aisle, it's full, which is really unfortunate. And just getting back to the Tetra Pak um, kind of containers, whether they be for milk or whatever other container of that sort, and it does have wax on it, is that um, recyclable in the blue bin? Amazingly, the answer to that one is yes, but that's what I but, thought. But for, some, but for some reason, ice cream containers are not. Oh, because they're processed. They're processed. The lining is processed with something okay. that's not. Okay. I think milk containers and the Tetra Pak that she had would be also, but uh, milk containers are, are orange juice containers are. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure what you just held up is as well, but ice cream containers are not. <clears throat> Yeah, curiously, they're not um, very well labeled in that regard. True. Any of these. And so people, you know, it is confusing. Um, it's very confusing. It, that, it is, that is one that's sorry on, that on people, suggestion. That, that one's one that you could put on uh, and go into the, uh, the website and it should guide you on that. You know, um, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm very disappointed <laughs> that these <laughs> many type of bags, I have to say, um, I don't know what I'm going to do with them, but I'm not putting them in the trash yet. So maybe I'll have to try to put them through my shredder. shredder. Okay. <laughs> Small pieces. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I've, been Thank putting you. Those in, I've been putting those in um, the plastic bag recycling, which I guess now I'm learning is wrong. Me too. I, I, now. I was, like I said, I'm kind of guessing, but I think the, the harder, the harder, crunchier plastics are not. We've asked before on some of these things, um, such as cookie bags and, and other you know types of bags, which you feel are like, you know, a crunchy, softer plastic. It's it really has to be the type of plastic. Unfortunately, ironically, when you go to the grocery store and you pick up those really thin plastic bags, you know, to put produce in, those are uh, you know, you can put those in the plastic bag recycling. Those kind of bags. The other kind, the other kind of bags. Putting the cereal bag liners now. I'm wondering yeah. those bags are. Those are okay. Those are okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep, so Mitch, I just are... remember a while ago you said if um, if you can crumple it in your hand, you can put it in. So yeah, that was a little bit uh, misleading. Yeah. Okay. That's what we thought. But we heard otherwise, but um, we can hopefully get some more information on that, Susan. There's some very good questions there. Yeah. Um, well, my only hope then, if if that's the case, then the manufacturers start using some sort of container bag that can be recycled in some way. Right. The one with the lemons, I'm just not sure. That that one's that one's up in the air. So well it's very unfortunate because <laughs> the, the other the other ones with liners and other kinds of um non non uh you know really um soft plastic would not be so okay thank you all right when, when you recycle um OJ and milk cartons. Uh, do we have to take the, the tops off because they're plastic? Mm. My understanding they can be left on. They have to be. Yeah. They have to be left on, actually, because they need a ride. Right. Yes, they're too small. Yes. Right. Left, yes. They should be left on. Yep. That's right. How, how about when you get in the mail the the soft plastic when it has like an envelope, like an, an, an adhesive. You know the address is on there. Are you supposed to cut that off before you no, put it in there? Fine. Yes. You can. You can. You those can go through. If it's, if it's minor, minor contamination like that. That's that's not a big a deal. Um, oh, seriously? I read that you should cut it off first. <sighs> that's what I read. Yeah, I read that you should cut the paper label off first. Okay. Cut, cut what Honest off? To God. The paper label. Mm. Like the, the sticker on it. Okay. All right, moving on, we can approve, hopefully, the minutes of the March 17th meeting. Is there uh, any additions or corrections, or is there a motion to approve? Approve. Okay, motion by Eileen to approve. Is there a second? I approve. Second by Patrick. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any aye. opposed? Any abstentions? None. Motion carries unanimously. Um, next up on the agenda is committee membership update, where I really don't have one. And remember, we are on OGAT right now, so I'll be very careful what I say. 
Um, but there is there is one member I'm being told that uh, will soon, I thought already, uh, soon will be um, removed from the committee and a new member will soon be um, appointed, but that has not yet happened. I reached out uh, this past week to try and get some clarification, but I have not gotten anything finalized. So still working that issue. Um, and we'll go from there. Treasury report, Mark. Uh, our balance is $1,907.44. The only activity during the past uh, month has been the $550 to Affordable Solutions for our shredding day, and then the return from the Rotary Club who sponsored it. Very good. Um, since this is a special meeting, the reason it's a special meeting is because last week was the budget hearing, uh, which I attended. And by doing so, I realized that in the budget, there's $1,800 allotted for the Orange Recycling Committee once again for next year. Um, that is if the budget passes. So I think that's um, $50. The, 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 budget, the budget is uh, uh, referendums on May 20th. So just keep that in mind. Um, okay. Uh, next up is the update on, on residential recycling participation rates. And so with that, we actually, in March, with the last numbers we got, we had 83.67 tons that were recycled um, in the town of Orange, which is a little bit of a 3.4% higher than the year before, which is a good thing. But overall, January through March, we're still down by 6.4% from last year. So that's the update on the recycling. And the update, oh, and the contaminated load, I got no further information. No one seems to know oh. about the contaminated load. So I don't have, you know, the speculation is that it had a lot of plastic uh, bags in it and wrapping it, but mm -hmm. we, still don't have, we never got an answer uh, on that. So I'll let it lie. Um, didn't see anything contaminated. I didn't notice anything contaminated being rejected in March. Um, Next up is our update on the textile recycling and simple recycling in um, the month of March. 9,780 pounds were delivered for a total of $562.35 to the town of Orange. So that's all good. Although we're going to talk a little bit more about that in under old business. Um, which brings us to old business. Any questions? It brings us to old business. All right. Plastic bag shed at the transfer station, up and running. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, it's, it's there now. We'll see for how long. Um, now, hopefully it's there for a long time. And uh, Chris, who couldn't make it tonight, um, has not heard anything further from Home Depot about the permanent shed. We're kind of holding off right now as the, uh, the, the one that's there now seems to be doing fine. And the rack and pack bag it, it is despite the fact that susan has plenty of bags she can't put in that oh uh, there's it's <laughs> just it's just filling up i mean there was one day when i was there probably 9 9 30 on a saturday morning it was full and the attendant Ooh. told me that they had taken that out at 4 30 the night before and put a brand new bag in last that that last night in an hour and a half in the morning it was filled up so it's just uh we really have been uh uh, collecting a lot of plastic wrap. So um, so that's where we're at at the moment. <clears throat> um, next up is the simple recycling at the transfer station and high plains. So here's where we've got some challenges, uh, frustrations on both sides, uh, frustrations at the transfer station of the fact that things are not being picked up to the satisfaction of the transfer station attendants. Um, on the other side of the coin, with simple recycling, the items that are being brought there are A, strewn all over the place, B, B are much, much more so non-clothing and textiles than they ever expected, uh, C, a lot of things that they cannot and will not take because they don't meet the criteria, but they're being left there anyways for them to clear out. And, and D, just broken items, uh, mm. broken dishes, broken broken um, frames and pictures and, and things like that, broken, broken chairs, um, which is leading to filling the, the, um, the, sh the shed or the um, trailer quicker, but not with things that are, are useful, not with things we're going to get paid for, 
and is making it very difficult for them to clear out what they really need. So two things have come up though that I want to discuss with you and it may take some action on our part um, to help out, um, maybe utilizing a little bit of either ingenuity or possibly some funding, which would be to, um, and I, I need to talk to someone at the transfer station first on, on this anyways, because we just discussed it today, Sonny and I, is possibly getting bags from the pink bags that people are used to, but leaving them with the attendant with a sign that would say, all clothing and shoes and any small items must be bagged. Uh, if you think about the piece person coming to pick things up, if they're picking up, you know, one article of clothing, another article of clothing, and trying to gather things up, it is time consuming and is not and is not productive because things are getting dirty mm. and, and getting uh, if it's if it's good clothing, it's being ruined. Um, so the idea would be to either a route is to put a sign up, you know, that they have to be bagged, see the attendant at the at the hopper for a bag, free bag, you know, those plastic bags we all hate. Um, or we leave bags there in the trailer. The problem is they claim they've left pink bags in the trailer. They all get taken and they see very little coming back with things in there. Mm. So that's that's been an issue. Um, the other thing that's happening, which probably ha has happened for many, many years, but is, is very upsetting, is the fact that items that are good or maybe, you know, it's the old adage, one man's junk is another man's treasure. Um, things are going in the trailer and coming out of the trailer of value, but not to simple recycling. They're being taken by other residents, hmm. thinking it's a free-for-all swap shop, which it is not. Um, so... You know, we've got some, some challenges ahead. Um, the, most, the biggest challenge, and this is where I turn to both Eileen and Loretta, who are, are, are great publicists, to really, really push clothing and shoes for that. I think people need to realize, you know, that's, that's not only their bread and butter, but it also will help this program uh, go much smoother. Most of the other things they're taking are, are in, in, in Sonny's words, junk. Yeah, uh, it's not it's not things that are things, you know, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of things that are put in that that trailer that are um, useful for resale, which is where they would make any money. But, you know, broken frames, you know, um, broken anything for that matter. Um, things that are just totally literally should be thrown away. And it's, it's wishful recycling. People want to give it to someone else thinking that someone else can, can benefit. And the, and the ironic thing is when it comes to the clothing and shoes, they can be in any condition, but other items really can't. And so hopefully for anybody watching this program, we'll get that and help spread that message. Um, and then looking to Eileen and uh, Loretta to help with our, you know, Facebook webpage and um, publicity in the newspapers to help spread that that message um, well part of the problem might be the signage because we had that big sign made saying everything that can be put in and you know it was approved by simple recycling and it includes things like pots and pans and uh, curtains and whatever else i forgot but there's it, about it does it does and i guess um living you learn kind of thing this is the first time they've done something this big at a transfer station and where they expected where they get other collections uh, from other places, just notably the pink bags. Think about it. Nobody was putting, you know, people probably weren't putting a chair in the pink bag, but they bring a chair here. And that was, so the pink bag idea worked out very well because it was small appliances and clothing and shoes. And that's where they were doing well until pandemic hit and all those other things happened. But um, Loretta? Do you, do you think that people are used to goodwill? And yep. they, they, where they can take furniture, right? Where they have taken furniture before? True, but once again, um, even Goodwill, when we heard repeatedly, and some of us even saw ourselves, if you were there when Goodwill came, they first purged quite a bit of what, oh, cool. you know, so. I like the idea of having a bag with the uh, person, uh, the employees there. At, at the uh, transfer station, 
because there's more control that way. Uh, and are not the employees looking over to see people put furniture in? And stuff? No, they're, 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 they sometimes do if something takes a long time. I see a large piece of something. But yeah. For the most part, they're watching the hopper. Right, what goes right. The hopper, what should and should. They're really not... <clears throat> They're not attending the trailer. They're not expected to attend the trailer. Quite yeah. For, for yeah, it's things. true. But I will, uh, on my usual Saturday morning jaunt, uh, speak to them this Saturday about whether it would be an inconvenience for them to have the bags. You know, if we if we supply bags or simple recycling supply bags um, for for them to have for people to, you know, if you didn't, if you didn't bring your clothes in a bag, you know, please grab a bag from the um, attendant so that it'll make things a lot easier. Should Anna, we, thoughts, Lylene? Should we, um, should we simply go over there with some white duct tape and put it over some of the words on that sign of things that we don't want to be put in there anymore? No, I think, you know, it's, it's not that the things on the sign are a problem. The, 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 it's things in the sign that are that are well. There are things that are not on the sign that are being put in there. People just assume they can put anything in there, um, which yeah. is not the case. Furniture, bicycles, electronics are three biggies that show up there. Um, and um, you know, it's just that we we need to. I think what would really help would be to increase the percentage of textiles, which uh -huh. is that's what they really you know, work, work towards, you know, the clothing, the shoes, the backpacks, uh, curtains, things like that. So we'll see. Mitch, would the committee consider um, urging people to bring those correct items of clothing and shoes in a cardboard box? That's fine. A cardboard box would work. I think, I think it's easy. The easiest thing for the, the person picking up is to just grab a, you know, a, a enclosed bag, just like you would a garbage bag, you know. Well, sure, maybe, uh, I mean, but, but those, those are plastic bags. Again, yep. I think it defeats I gotta, I gotta hope that they're doing something right with them. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't think that, you know, I think that there are too many bags of that nature. So I, I wouldn't want to promote any more use. Yeah, I understand. I understand the thought, but uh, we're trying to do one thing. It's, you know, it's like, I still get the, the newspaper right. still comes in a plastic bag, but garbage still goes in a plastic bag for most people. Not not everybody, but um, certainly we're trying to cut down on the groceries in a plastic bag. That's for sure. No, that's right. Right. But many people many people yeah. throw the their cardboard boxes in the cardboard area. For example, a lot yeah. of people have a lot of cardboard boxes yeah. these days because of shipping. Um, so I would think that would be a really good use of them. Yep, it could be. I mean, certainly that, that's it, it, that's preferred to having just things just thrown on the ground or put in the, there's bins in there, you know, just thrown in the bins. Um, mm -hmm. And so, especially if you got something heavy or something that's breakable um, to put in mm -hmm. a box, it'd be much mm -hmm. better also. Loretta? But to require everybody to bring boxes would mean that it would be difficult for simple recycling to put them in their trucks, boxes of different sizes. So, no, if they, if yeah. they, stack, if they stack well, that's fine too. But um, plastic bags stack better. You just throw them in. Yep. I'm, I'm not for the plastic bags, but I'm just thinking of simplicity at this point. Right. Yeah. Once again, just trying to get more and more of the. Um, Clothing, clothing, uh, and shoes, and also at the high plains, where we try to promote. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have Eileen and Mark are coming back on. I think and they bounced off and bounced back on. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. Okay, yeah. back. So, Mitch. Yep, Karen. Um, what do you propose to do about the swapping? Is it just a matter of putting a sign there? Don't take anything because it's intended for charity and not for swapping we could mm -hmm. the thing about that too i could talk to sonny about whether that would be he thinks that would be helpful some sort of signage believe me when he when he and i got off the phone i said we we're both gonna do some brainstorming and i said i'm doing mine tonight with you guys <laughs> you know no we, we listen we were on the phone good half hour today you know just wow. the the issues um trying to make this work for everyone but it's been frustrating on on all sides and um 
I don't, I think it can be overcome, but right. it's going to take some work on everybody's part. But Karen, that's a good idea. We can discuss with them whether they think that's appropriate. Loretta. Um, how's he doing in other communities? Is he having these same problems? They don't, they don't do this with anybody else right now. Oh. Everything else they do is either with the pickups like Milford, uh, okay. which will have the pink bag pickups because they, they follow the, the Milford truck. Okay. Um, or, or they've got the typical bin like we have at High Plains, mm -hmm. which is much less susceptible to finding a chair put in. <laughs> yeah. You know, they're made for clothing and shoes. You know, yeah. so that's what they would find more or small, you know, small appliances, small items. So, Gee, yeah. they put, could simple recycling put a few of those bins inside the trailer and people have to put it in the bin that's in the trailer? Um, you know, they, they put they put those other, they, 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 it took a long time. We got them to put those metal bins in there. That's kind of like um, to separate things. Um, so that kind of bin is extremely expensive and to put it inside the trailer just kind of defeats the purpose. We How have to do they empty that? Curious. Four times a week. Oh, I take that back. Their their van is there four times a week. Being empty is a whole other story. It's not being emptied anytime. It's they take what they can, they come back the next time, they make a big dent, they make a small dent, depends on how much is in there and how much they can fit in the van each time. But they're there four times a week. Does the town transfer? Are you just leaving the broken chair in there, or are they just? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. What I said. To, what I said to to um, uh, Sonny was, if there are broken items, you know, they should not feel obligated to take them. They should put them in the hopper. You know. Right. I wonder. I if also. I also spoke to the the um, uh, the supervisor down there last week, and he said he's pulled things out of there too that he knows they won't take. So we do have some help from from the transfer station personnel too. So. Well, remember we were we were talking about um, on Saturdays uh, a member of the ORC standing over there by the um, uh, that big dumpster, yep. if you will, where where uh, bottles and cans are supposed to be thrown in, and people are putting in plastic bags. So we were going to politely uh, tell them this is not appropriate. Could we do this? We never did it, but I think it'd be great. We could start. The weather's starting to be nice. Uh, what about doing something like that up at the uh, Simple Recycling Trailer? Could. Bring your water pistol or something. <laughs> <laughs> no violence, please. <laughs> what if you fill it with juice? <laughs> <laughs> Open up. Um, we can think about doing something like that. Um, yeah. Loretta, you want to try to put together a schedule? I mean, it depends how many people want to spend some time. You know, even, even an hour would be impressive. Uh, I have a friend of mine who uh, has a friend of his who reminds him all the time he's afraid to go to the transfer station because Mitch Goldblatt came out one time and yelled at him for putting plastic bags in the. Uh, I said, well, at least he remembered. <laughs> Made an impact. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I didn't mean to yell at anybody, but I guess maybe that came through that way. <laughs> uh, some people are very sensitive. Yeah. So. All right, well, Loretta, if you want to try to put together a schedule, maybe we can see if we can have somebody at the transfer station for a little while, and as the weather gets warmer, if people are willing to do that. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five, six, seven of us, and eight, Christopher, okay. Yes, too. We can put it around. Send, send something around. We can do that. Yeah, I will. I'll, I'll sign take, up. I'll, I'll take Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to it, uh, all right, Alec. All right, let's yeah. move on. Um, shredding day, April 10th, I thought was great. Uh, almost uh, too great. <laughs> too great, yeah. They line up too early. For anyone, for anyone that doesn't know, we, um, we, we, we pulled an all-time record of about 14,000 pounds of paper and 65 mattresses, which actually filled that truck for the first time. It filled the mattress truck. Uh, the Lions made more money than they ever did. The Rotary wow. made more money than they ever did with donations. It, it's it's just amazing to me how much still comes out. The Orange Country Fair um, people were were quite happy with what they got in terms of their food drive. Um, I'm not sure how successful we were in getting. I saw at least one or two um, um, 
bags and clothes to mm -hmm. go to go to simple recycling. We directed them on where to go. Thanks for the signage that uh, Eileen and Chris worked on, I think. And um, but you know, Joe Johnston was just blown away. He says that's the most he has ever recycled in a three-hour period and shredding anywhere, anytime. Wow. Wow. Does the town make any money for that at all, or that? Not really. No, the town did not. Joe, Joe, you know, I don't know if he 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 pays, gets paid for that. Um, I'm not sure. The, the the market for for shredded paper goes up and down all the time. Um, um, I'm not sure. I think it's more of us a, a goodwill gesture on his part. He may make some money on it, but not a lot. The town, the only what the town makes quite frankly, is paper that does not get thrown away in the hopper or even recycled. Because we're, we're paying to have things recycled. So you know, anything we can divert, same thing with the mattresses. I mean, you know, an average of 30 to 50 pounds of mattress, you know, taking those things out of the municipal solid waste mm. does save us money and it gets recycled. So, uh, you know, the mattresses are certainly a win-win. And I think the paper... Is a win as well, and the, the donations seem to really appreciate it. The Rotary Club, um, I used to say, more than makes up for the amount they they pay for for sponsoring the shredding truck. I think they, it, it's a it's a real money maker for their foundation, which is great. Yes. Uh, absolutely, absolutely great. Um, so I think we've done very well, and uh, we'll talk under new business about the next shredding. Day. Loretta. Could we could we leave that sign that nice sign that Eileen and Chris worked on pointing back to the um, simple recycling hopper? If it were there all the time, maybe more people would be aware of it and go back there. We could leave it, although it's not really authorized. Although not to say there aren't signs up there that aren't authorized. Um, yeah, it would probably disappear after a while, and then you know it's up to. Um, whether you want to leave it there or not. I think people are getting the idea of where it is. Yeah. We were interested. Oh, good. But good. Uh, uh, we'll see. But you know, trying to trying to direct people where that is. Now that people are more people are coming back to the pool, now that more people are coming back to uh, the ball fields, the walking track, the fairgrounds, hopefully it gets more recognition. And um, people But say it's mushed it. against the building. It is because <clears throat> the other the other spots that were discussed all created parking problems. And that was um, what they tried to do. They, they were directed, that's where the town, the town <laughs> wanted it to be placed. So uh, it's not, it's not, you know, it's not something you're gonna, you're gonna throw something from your window of the car anyways, you gotta get out of the car. Um, but you gotta know it's there. You gotta know it's there, yeah. And, and if it's, if it replaces one of those big um, bin things that are there, I don't know what they're for. Yes. Okay. Okay, thank you.
wanted to watch it be shredded. So they had to pull over to the side, get out of the car, then back back up. Um, you know, that, that did hamper things a bit as far as the flow goes. It didn't hamper anything as far as how much we took. It did, it did uh, hold up some of, the, some of the flow of cars. So the more that people can bring things either in paper bags or paper boxes, uh, at worst, the plastic bags, which we bring, believe me, uh, there was very little that ended up in the trash after that day because the cardboard all went to the cardboard, the plastic bags all went to the to the plastic bag uh, rack and pack at the uh, transfer station, and even the paper bags went into paper recycling. So uh, I was very, very little. I collected a whole bag of paper bags because our church is having a tag sale, and I wanted them. Okay. And I turn around and somebody hauled off. <laughs> People were so good at cleaning it up, <laughs> but it's okay. Are we going to under new business? Are we going to talk about details? Uh, 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 you know, when we get to the October non shredding day, are we going to talk about what we might do differently? Sure. sure. Yeah. Good. Good. I got, I got a couple. All ideas. right. Anything else on on shredding day? All right. If not, next up is the uh, proposed expanded bottle bill, Senate Bill ten thirty seven. Um, it has been voted out of committee, which is a good thing. Um, it's with the legislature now. Whether the um, bill itself gets called, as they say, for a vote is questionable, as every bill is questionable when it gets to that point. Um, it has the full support. I've, had, I've been in contact with Christine Cohen, Senator uh, from Guilford, who happens to also be the chair of the environmental, one of the co-chairs of the environmental oh. committee. Um, very supportive of that, that bill. Um, and told me she appreciated our support. I've spoken to um, a couple of our state legislators, including uh, Mary Wielander and James Maroney about this. So hopefully, mm. I've, I, and I've written to um, all, of, all four of our local legislators, as well as the leadership. Um, so hoping that we get um, this passed. You probably also, I'm not sure if I share, I think I shared with you, there's a coalition that I have signed on to on our behalf. Uh, has a whole bunch of environmental groups in the state of Connecticut uh, on board, uh, pushing for the, this particular bottle bill, and our name is now attached to that as well. So, great. You know, if you're at any time in contact with any particular legislator, just let them know. Senate Bill 1037, you support, and in the next several weeks, because it won't be much longer, we will know the fate. Uh, of the bill and whether it does go through or not and um, continues to make an impact for the bottle bill. But thank you everybody for your support of that and trying to get the information out to as many people as possible. Next up, uh, this is uh, Susan Weiland's uh, suggestion and I wanna take her up on it. Um, <clears throat> she is offered to help us recycle something that is not pretty much recyclable right now, which are pill bottles. Mm -hmm. uh, number five plastics, um, those small uh, bottles of varying different colors, uh, mostly orange. Uh, Susan, tell us more about what you would like to do and I've got some ideas, so go ahead. Right, so um, the easy part is to collect them. I already have a, a whole huge box of them, um, which um, I would gladly ship out to Ohio to the uh, ministry that is in charge of using them wherever they are needed. And it happens to be because, uh, one of the results of the pandemic. It's one of the items actually in the world that is um, behind schedule in manufacturing. And so many, many places, um, whether they're because of natural disaster or um, other economic reasons do not have any um, vials of any sort to put medicines in. So it's a, it's a, it's a very real need. Unfortunately, there's, there's very few <laughs> places that, that um, use them for this purpose, uh, good repurpose. Um, one of the issues, um, and I'm going to have to get more clarification on it because while I'm pretty good at getting labels off, I thought um, not good enough because some of these labels on those medicine vials are extremely, they're like cemented on, mm. uh, very difficult to get off. I've tried boiling and I've tried different, different things. Um, 
that I have, and that's pretty hard. So the, this um, outfit in Ohio does have a grinder. So when they get these vials that, that are not totally clean, um, they can grind them and they have, a co they have companies that purchase that ground plastic and reuse them to manufacture other things. Um, but of course, I, I think one of my main goals would be to have them reused as medicine vials. Mm -hmm. So I have to, to get more clarification on that and see um, how I can go about being better <laughs> to get the labels off. So you have a good point, Susan. We leave ours soaking for a week or two at a time, and we still can't get more than half of it off. Yes, it's, it's, it it's amazing. A little exaggerating, but... Well, it's not that far off. <laughs> Susan, are these uh, only the prescription bottles are looking for? Are they also looking for the over-the-counter uh, vitamin? They can, the they vitamin can also take, I know, Tylenol and things like those kind, too. Okay. Yeah. Is so they'll, 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 never, they'll, they'll never get the labels off of those, though. Yeah. Those okay. are hard to get off. And vitamin, bill, vitamin bottles? Um, I'll check on it, but probably because those are also, I believe, the same the same plastic. No, I think those are actually number twos as opposed to number five. The oh, they are is, number two. Okay. I think the, the problem is they're too small. A lot of them are too small um, to put into the regular recycling. What is the mm -hmm. um, what is the measurement needed? Two by two by two. Two by two. If it fits in a two by two, it's too small. Okay. A lot of the a lot of the vitamins I see and supplements I see are are, are pretty big these days. Mm -hmm. Right, the the, the 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 big bottles aren't a problem. If you have a small, you know, it depends on the okay. size of the pill and everything else and what the quantity is. Okay. If, you buy, if you're buying the larger sizes and they're number two recycling, they can easily go into your into your bin if okay. they're smaller. But here's here's some thoughts. Uh, Susan, a couple of things. I don't know how the rest of the committee feels, but first I have one key question. Do you see this as being a temporary fix because of pandemic things, or you see this being a permanent, or they may get overwhelmed, or you see this being a permanent thing that can go on for years? You know what I'm saying? I know you're-, you're, you're Yeah, well, well, they ship all over the world, so I believe it's unfortunately permanent. Okay. Unfortunately, because many countries don't have the facilities to make to make these products. Okay. And um, when you ship them to this oh. ministry in Ohio, what is a typical, have you done this already? Have you shipped already? I or have you... not because I still am collecting. Okay. And you're just collecting from friends and you're, yourself and friends? My neighbors and friends, right. Because okay. um, we all like to help you. <laughs> um, right. I've, already, I've already started my collection. Oh, oh, great. Nice. Well, if anybody has any any special ideas about the, the labels that <laughs> somehow are adhering to these, no matter what. Well, what you know. has this place in Ohio given any suggestions? Um, they mentioned soaking and, and a couple of things, but I'm going to call them back tomorrow and okay. get a little bit more information. Okay. So See here's if some more ideas. Collecting, like what? But what kind of method we would do for the public though well that's that's where I'm, I'm heading for this i've got a couple ideas um first off is that um if the committee would like if we have some idea this is my idea but we'll see how people feel the plastic bag shed is fairly large i would suggest we put in a um a large a large um, Rubbermaid or large garbage container with a small hole in the top, one that would be probably about two by two. Um, you know, so the, to so the top of the container would be on the container. Mm -hmm. lift up, you'd have to put it through the hole um, with signage that would say medicine and vitamin and pill, whatever you want, containers, empty, cleaned, um, preferably no labels. I'm not sure we get that far. Um, I know Susan, you're going to hate this part of my suggestion, uh, line it with a big plastic bag so that when you're it's, right. I don't like it. <laughs> when it's full, it's, yeah. you know, how, how are you going to get them out of there? Right. Uh, unless you want to scoop them out individually. Um, when it's full, we, we, uh, un unhinge the top and give those to you to mail out. So 
the thought is we do have, you know, a treasury. Now the question is how much it's going to cost the mail. They're, they're light. That's the good news. Uh, yeah. the boxes could be large. That's the bad news. Postage is expensive. That's the bad news. But I think if the committee was willing, we could start a trial period of seeing if we could do this. And then we would, you know, temper. I've got, there's a second half of this, um, temporarily pay for the, um, the bin, the cutting out, the signage, uh, the liners of whatever type they are, um, and the postage. Mm -hmm. um, if you would help, if you're willing to help coordinate that, so we have somebody who's actually going to pick them up because they're obviously not going to get picked up by anybody else. Yeah. Um, the second part of this is I recently read in the DEP newsletter that there are some new grants available. Mm -hmm. And the grants are from $1,000 to $15,000 uh, based on new initiatives uh, for recycling. There's a couple of different criteria. You can go on the website to see that. And I'm thinking that this should not be an overly expensive thing. Right. But if we were to put in for a $1,000 grant to initiate this, would help pay for everything I've just mentioned, including the postage. Um, I think... The, I, I have to double check now. I think the grant would have to be by May 30th and grants would be awarded for July 1st. So okay. I'm not sure how people feel about the whole thing. So I throw it out there. Thoughts, comments? I like it very much. I remember the Church of the Good Shepherd was doing this many years ago. Right, still collecting medicine. Uh prescription bottles whatever happened do they do this sort of thing shipping can't hear you loretta can't hear you okay um anyway to the good shepherd was doing this a very long time ago also so it must be a ministry that's been going on for a while uh will, will they uh, some of the prescriptions that i get are now uh already pre-packaged uh, right from the uh company that makes the, the medicine little white Yep. Screw top bottles. They'll take those also. Anything, right? It doesn't have to be the orange ones. I believe so. And I think Susan's going to have to get us some more information. Okay. First gift for herself as far as what's being taken and the sizes and the, the labeling issue. But Perfect. I think it's a great initiative. I don't know how many else feel. I mean, people don't feel that. That's fine. Speak now. <laughs> I like it very much. In fact, uh, if if Susan could, once she gets the information, email us a little report. So if, if uh, you know, it looks good, or we'd have to meet to approve, I mean, we could start collecting right now. Mm -hmm. And hopefully okay. people won't flush their expired medicine down the toilet either, right? Oh, God, no. They're right. supposed to take it to the police station. Right, right. police station right. will collect 24-7 on any expired, any expired or just unused not 24 no? 7 no? i went there the other day and you can't get past the inner lobby because oh. of covid so okay. you have to okay. call them and they'll come and take it but All when right. they're open well maybe they are open 24 7 they should be right i don't well, know i thought you used to be able to just walk into the lobby so i guess maybe not anymore i don't think you can no. just walk into the lobby now okay. no you can't all right but anyways the police department does have a uh container there specifically for prescription medicines mm -hmm. not liquids just pills and things like that. um okay so put your pills in mm, put your Aaron. pills in a little yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this sounds great um the adhesive remover that we use in the hospital just to get the tape off of patients is um is really good you can buy it order it on Amazon or just acetone nail polish remover mm -hmm. that will work with just about any glue. So I think and you, might, goo gone. you need to be like a chemist, I think. <laughs> a lot, a lot of labor intensive there. So I don't know. It's labor intensive, but it's, there's a reason why those things are glued on tightly. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Other thoughts? Should we, should we pursue this? Should Susan pursue this with us, with us helping, if we, with or without a grant? What's the thoughts? Well, I think we should do a trial run of a first shipment, see how much it costs, 
uh, and then, you know, apply for the grant as well and see, you know, where we are at the end of May, whether we get the grant or not. And then yeah. we get to it. Yeah, I think we should try it. Mm -hmm. Susan, I'm looking at you because you're the real, real catalyst in this. Are you willing to uh, take this on or is this too I much? am. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to try. Okay. See how it goes. Yeah. I mean, do you know anybody who's not on medication? <laughs> no, frankly. <laughs> so, you aren't. <laughs> uh, that's great. I like that. All right. Um, yeah, it would be help. It would be helpful to know, you know, how many packages of pill bottles they receive, either daily or weekly, and you know, how much they're turning around and, and shipping out as well, just okay. to get an idea how big it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Um, and uh, one thing that, um, if I could find someone who might have the knowledge um, at Whole Foods to find out what they were doing with their medicine vials when they were collecting them for a number of years. Oh. They're no longer are doing. Mm. All right. So Susan, you look into that, get back to us, at least get back yes. to me and figure uh -huh. out what we can do and then um, then we can pursue it. Um is there a motion then to pursue this initiative and also look into the possibility of seeing if we can, we can apply for a grant? So we're making a motion. Karen makes a motion. Is there a second? Loretta, any discussion? If not, all in favor, send the phone saying aye. 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 Any, oppo any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries. Very good. Thanks, Susan. Really appreciate it. That's great. Uh, yeah. Okay. Loretta, anything to, to tell us about food scraps? Nothing new? No. Okay. No, this, no. The only, I only went to one place. They weren't interested, as you know, so I didn't bother going to the other. Okay. Um, our tour of Oak Ridge Recycling Plant, I think we're getting closer. <laughs> I say that because, well, we can't go any farther. Um, I say that because <laughs> of the, um, the recent information, you know, about gatherings, especially if people have been vaccinated. So I will reach out to Oak Ridge and then between now and the next month and see what their thoughts are, um, if they're still, how restricted they are and whether it looks like it's something we can do, you know, in the next couple of months, we can set up a date, probably a Saturday morning or something like that. So we'll go from there. Any other old business that I haven't brought up? <clears throat> okay, new business. So almost immediately, uh, when the shredding day ended on uh, April 10th, there was talk of when do we do this again? So I happened to speak to uh, Joe Johnson from um, Affordable Solutions and a couple of members of the Rotary Club uh, before we all broke up and checked my calendar. And we came up with Columbus weekend, which is October 9th. <clears throat> um, which was available to the three of us. In the next 48 hours, I contacted the Lions Club, I contacted uh, the shredding, the mattress uh, people, and I contacted High Plains, and all the stars and moons aligned. So we are on for October 9th. Right. Um, October. October 9th. 9th. Saturday, Saturday 9th, 9 to whenever the truck gets full. <laughs> uh, 8.30, you mean. <laughs> oh, I say nine. <laughs> so um, that's um, that's where we're at. Now, Loretta, you want to suggest some things for next time? I definitely want to get the sawhorses out there again. That was a big, big help this time. Uh, Donnie Foyer was more than happy to help us with that. Um, we also put the um, the mattress truck on the outer circle on mm. the outer end of where the shredding truck was that seemed to give it more visibility and worked out better for them so that was a good thing i mean logistically the only thing that i can think of and i'm sure loretta's got some other ideas that would work better is if we can keep people moving and the best way we do that is by, by in, assisting as much as we can that people not bring they bring their shredding in containers that they need back okay. well that's what one thing I wanted to address, I don't mean to interrupt, I'm sorry. No, no, no. If, they want, if they want them back, tell them to go around and wait over there by the mattress. 
and we'll just put them on the grass so they can come and get them. I mean, you, you we put it we put it in all of our publicity. Right. Bring bring stuff that we can dispose of. So don't bring plastic bags. Don't or or uh, boxes. Yeah, plastic and bins removed. It's usually plastic bins or the banker's box. Right. You know they want back. Look, I understand. Sure. There's some there's some, <laughs> there's some very heavy duty containers there. Um, <clears throat> yeah. yeah. I prefer. So, so, I like to encourage that people do bring. Um, in bins they want to reuse. Why should we encourage people to bring it in something disposable and then, you know, just keep creating more garbage? So I like oh. the idea that come, we'll put your bin over here and you can come back and get it later type of thing. I mean, who's going to steal other people's bins? No, that's true. Well, I mean, they just drive around. Yeah. They can just drive and sit there at the... Uh, well, they can drive straight, uh, they can drive straight ahead and, and, and at the um, by the walking track. The the yeah. issue the issue is just that, or drive back around. You're right. The, the that's easier that, if they drive. You know how this works. You I know, mean, one of us can certainly stand there and make yeah. sure. Yeah, just walk yeah. it over to that strip of grass yeah. between the two parking areas. Well, the yeah. problem is the problem is you have to go all the way around out back on Orange Center Road to do that because you can't take a right. Oh yeah, right. In that's front right. Of that's right. You'd have, to, you'd have to go straight ahead to where the walking track is um, or yeah. pull off to the side. But we shouldn't have people pulling off to the side by the truck because then they have to back up to get out and that holds everything. Oh, up. geez. Yeah, bad news. That's too bad. Yeah, and I think Rich is thinking about the flow and it's become really big. So you have to just keep it moving. Keep it moving. And we did better this year, I think, in keeping it moving. Oh, I think we definitely did. And and yes. so I know what you're saying, Eileen, you're about recycling the bins. Um, but a lot of people bought in cardboard boxes that all got recycled. The paper all got recycled, although the letter mm -hmm. wanted it all. Um, and even the, <laughs> even the the plastic bags ended up in the uh, in the with the with the plastic bag rack and pack shed at the transfer station. So we did a mm -hmm. really Perfect job at recycling just about everything that came in. Yeah, there's the, the occasional um, binders and and other things that are just impossible. But you know, we um, got through most. Oh, we set aside a box, yeah, to go yeah. to the garbage. It was. Um, it makes sense for anybody who wants their box back to say, "Okay, come back and get it at 11:30," and like then we could put it to the side near the mattress thing and. Well, you know, if it, then you have a bunch of you have a bunch of cardboard boxes. Some will get claimed. Some will, will want to break down the ones, and then we'll break down somebody's box. Who, I mean, just I would just pull off to the pull, go straight ahead, park, and walk back to get your box right there. There you go. There you go. Yes. Um, no. Yes. That's a great idea. Maybe we could have a couple yeah. sawhorses to mark off some parking. It's possible. We can we can look at different different ideas. Yes. But I think um, overall we've got a pretty good. We've done this enough times. We've got a pretty good flow. Um, we have enough. We have enough people there too to bring their box over. I don't think it should be that big a deal. It's pretty, yeah. Quite a few volunteers. I don't. It takes two seconds to run over there. Here's your box. Sure. But the idea is not to hold everybody else up. That's right. the that's the key. Right. So. Phil said that because Phil's uh, this year he's president of the Orange Rotary. He said that Derby Rotary called him up numerous times. Now, how do you do this shredding thing? And so they had, I was going to go, but it was raining that Saturday. But they uh, had one a couple of weeks later. And they were charging like a dollar uh, and then five dollars, depending on how much you brought. I, we really don't want that because then they don't donate as much to the Rotary Club. But, but there was also some thought, uh, is it fair for somebody to bring like, uh, uh, Joe, is that his name, the shredder? Yeah. He said that there were a couple or so doctors who came with tons of paper. They cleaned out their offices, and they were some of the first people there. Uh, yeah, that's another thing. That's a great idea, Loretta. I think maybe we also put in our publicity uh, maximum 10 boxes per trip. You want 10 more, you got to go back home and get them or come around again, because that was also holding things up. We had somebody with a lot of stuff. Um, right. not Not you can. Home. Medical medical shredding can't has to be specific for HIPAA reasons. It has to be um, shredded a certain way. I don't think that passes muster anyway. 
Legal? I don't think we would. I don't, may not have been medical files, but there was certainly a lot of um, obvious. Let's put it this way: obvious business files. Yes. As yes. As opposed to, you know, this is this is my fifty years of tax returns. Right. No, this is this is my my twenty years of forty different people's tax returns. Right. Yes. Yes. Um, yes. You know, don't you think ten boxes is is a lot, Mitch? No, I think. Listen, I think I think we can get through with ten. I mean, the problem is when people bring you know, 20, 30, uh, a pickup truck worth of stuff. Well, how many people do that? Not many, but those that do really, really hold things up and fill things up. Yeah. Yeah, well, I still think 10 is too many. All right, we can just, between now and... Uh, yeah, now, let's we, think we, about we, it. We can think about that. Yeah. And how about out-of-towners? Um, you know, we haven't done a, a, a check on that. Um, you know, the signs are only in town, but the newspapers go to other places, you know, <clears throat> people show up, look, they're doing their part to recycle. Yeah. It's, yeah, I don't want to start having to ask people to show the ID. I mean, it just, it, yeah. for, for the main reason is it's going to take longer. Right. What are you going to do? Somebody said, yeah, try to kick them out of line. What's that? <laughs> and you're going to try to kick them out of line and there's going to be a big incident. Right. They, they've been in line for, for 10 minutes or five and five minutes. They brought all their stuff there. You can say, no, you, you can't, you can't put it here. It's, it's not, if you, if they go that far, you know, we're going to hold things up and, um, you know, it's just, it's, I don't think it's worth, I don't, I don't think it's that big a problem, honestly. Are there, are there things okay. coming out of town? There probably are, you know, and the mattress people, oh as many as they can get and they actually got as many as they can get this time so um so all right anything else next up is has waste days uh i've contacted the regional water authority they are going to be doing has waste days they're supposed to be getting back to me probably in the next week or two with the day or dates they need us but the number of people they're going to need is only going to be i believe two or three as opposed to four or five mm. um each time uh, everything's paperless, and it's going to be pretty much just directing traffic. Oh. Uh, filling out of the forms, people are being told they must fill out the form ahead of time or on their phone, and then they're just going to show the form or their phone to uh, the attendant. So we, will, we, the volunteers, will not get involved in the forms, the pens, the papers, the clipboards. They just need people to help direct traffic, and they figure they only need two or three people each time. But they have not given me dates yet, so stay tuned. I will um, probably end up emailing you if we, you know, or talk to you next meeting. Um, but it may or may not be, um, you know. But by, by the next meeting, we'll have to know probably. Um, next part of new business. I received an email uh, this past week uh, from a company called Discover Books, oh, yeah. looking looking to. Uh, put up a book a book collection bin similar to the simple recycling bin in High Plains. Um, that kind of a bin at the transfer station for books. And I told the person that we already have quite a big collection of books <clears throat> with the uh, friends of the library. Oh yeah. So uh, I spoke to Loretta because I know she used to be on the library board. And she directed me to Phyllis Guacan, who is also going to, who I spoke to, was also going to speak to Maureen White. I think they're meeting in a couple of weeks, the Friends of the Library, to discuss the proposal. But here's the thing. What I found out, well, first of all, I said to this person, you know, we, we already collect books in town. We tell people, bring them to the library. Yeah, a lot of stuff gets there that they can't sell. Uh, but they make a lot of money selling books, as do a lot of friends across the state and probably across the country. Um, he came back with, well, how about if I pay two, two cents a pound? So it's getting a little more enticing. Um, so I, when I spoke to Phyllis, she said to me, wow, that's really interesting because there's a lot of stuff that we get that we can't sell. Either yeah. it's, it's in poor condition, moldy, mm -hmm. textbooks. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of stuff we can't sell. And guess what we do with it? We sell it to Discover Books for two cents a pound. Oh, no. So, <laughs> so, it's great that they do. Yeah. So I'm not sure that they're going to discuss. Now, listen, that the book sales held twice a year. People can drop off books year round. Um, is it worth 
for those people that would normally just either A, put in their recycle bin or B, throw in the hopper um, books that they're not using, uh, put them in a bin for just for books and the money go to the friends of the library? Maybe. So they're going to meet, discuss it, they'll get back to me and then I'll get back to um, this company. Uh, and if it's a go. We still have to get board of selectmen approval to put a bin up at the transfer station anyways, but um, uh, we're not there yet. Wendy. I have a question. So would this include textbooks? Yeah. Really? What do they do with these books? Well, they, here's the thing, just like simple recycling, it's one of those things where they want the good stuff and they throw away the bad. So huh. They want, they, they really are looking for books that they can read. If you go on their website, they're big at reselling books. Wow. So they'll buy a book from you for pennies. They'll sell for dollars. That's how they stay in business. Um, but there's also a bunch of books they'll get, which are no good, mm -hmm. um, which probably include the textbooks and the other, which they probably bring over to a Joe Johnson type person to shred. And maybe they get some money for it that way for clean paper. I don't know. I really don't know. What's the name of the outfit? Discover Books. Discover Books, that's right. So that's where that's at. I'll give you more information as I get it. Um, we'll see what it we'll see where that one goes. <laughs> that's interesting. All right. Um, our next meeting is scheduled for May 19th. Hey, I have new business. Oh, sorry. Well, so the, no, there's that's that's after. Ask if there's any new business. No, I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. I'm between book collection and other Okay. Meetings. Go ahead. So our next meeting is scheduled for May 19th. The question is whether people feel comfortable or think they'll be comfortable by May 19th, which is coincidentally one of the magic dates of the governor, um, to meet in person um, or not. Uh, the benefit, obviously, is seeing everybody in person and, and having our, our meetings like we used to. Uh, the disadvantage is we would not be broadcast on OGAT. So our publicity this way from whoever watches us on television, thank you for watching us or YouTube um, would, would end. Um, so I just want to try your minds and see what people feel. If people aren't ready, we'll hold on. Eventually we probably will go back to in-person at High Plains. But for now, uh, I just wanted to bring it up and see what people's thoughts were. I would ask if everybody's going to ask. Twice. I I can say I have. <laughs> I mean I vote I vote for in person. Have you been vaccinated twice? Yes, and I still think you should wear a mask. We would just you know yes. keep our distance, but I still you vote for in person. Yeah. Right. I think if it's a nice day like today, we can meet outside if that covered area is open. That would be nice and safe. We could, except we've got to publicize it ahead of time. Oh, okay. On the agenda. We have to we have to state how we're meeting, which right now is Zoom, and where we're meeting, so that if somebody from the public does want to attend, they can find us. <laughs> okay. But if it's a nice day, we could have windows open. That's true. Mm -hmm. Um, and it doesn't mean that we necessarily have to meet in the small conference room. Mm -hmm. In fact, it might be better if we don't meet in the small conference mm -hmm. room, meet in a larger mm -hmm. room where we spread out even more. When I was I, there um, on shred day, I went inside for a minute and I saw that that conference room was filled up with food for all the food donations. So that, uh, might, that room might not be available anymore. It was really filled. It might not be available, yeah. That's true. Um, Wendy, Patrick, any thoughts? <laughs> I'm good either way. I've been vaccinated twice, but I'm okay. I'm pretty flexible either way. All right. When I'm I'm enjoying my my um my flexibility at home, but <laughs> I will I will certainly go. It'll be good to see everyone. All right. Um, well, let's let's tentatively plan on trying to do it in person. Um, if that's what the choice it seems to be. Um, but we'll we'll I will. Pay attention to, you know, CDC and the governor uh, guidelines, and we can go from there if things do change for the better or for the worse. And if somebody feels strongly one way or the other, um, 
in between, please email me. All right. Cause we've basically said before, if somebody's uncomfortable, you know, meeting in person, we won't, but I think we're getting there. I'm optimistic. I'm feeling good um, about where we're headed, especially in Connecticut. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we'll be back in person. The budget hearing was held in person, by the way. Um, there were, it was in the gym and there were about 30 chairs or so spread out. Most of which were filled that did not fill everyone. Uh, but people were spread out nicely in the gym. There are other meetings that are being held now or being allowed to be held, um, you know, in, in the rooms as well. And the May 12th, um, board of selectmen slash annual meeting will be held in the gym and in person. So, uh, if we were to meet in the gym, do we have to pay custodians to set up and take down? No, but I don't think we need to do it. something as big as a gym. I'm just thinking one of the bigger classrooms we can meet in. Oh, yeah, that's true. As opposed to the conference room. Mm -hmm. so. All right, now, Mark, any new business? Yes, I received in the mail the other day the Orange Country Fair package. Good. Uh, soliciting for, you know, whether we want a booth or not. So I wanted to make a motion that we get our booth and table. Uh, you know, it was obviously everything's pending COVID restrictions, but it would uh, be $125 for the nonprofit groups to purchase their booth and $10 per table. Okay. So first, um, well, that's fine. Is there is there a motion to approve us? us um, Participate in the Orange Country Fair. And before you vote, remember that means you got to help out at some point. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you know the date? What's the date? Yeah. I'm so busy. Uh, I believe it's the 19th, 20th, or <laughs> Hold on, I can try to tell you in a second. Um, of September. The, Wait, we yes. throw yeah, right. the third week in September. It's the 18th, 19th. Yeah. This is going to be a win. Saturday, the 18th. Sunday, the 19th. Just look at it. And we usually get some other people to help us out, um, but certainly we, we, we do hope that everyone can help at least for part of a day on one of the days, if not more. Um, I, I miss Mary Jo, who would be there for both yeah. days for almost the whole time. <laughs> and Mark yeah, was the last, the last fair. Oh, Mark, Mark too. I'm sorry. Mark was there for a while. Mark and Eileen certainly. <laughs> I took over Mary Jo's spot. There you go. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> All right, is there a motion to um, approve us having a booth at the fair? Yes. So moved. Karen and seconded by Loretta. On the motion. Okay. Karen with the motion, Loretta with the second. So right. I will go ahead then and secure okay. a check to be mailed out. Further discussion? If not, all in favor, send if I was saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries unanimously. Any other new business? All right. If not, our next meeting, as I said, either in person or on Zoom, one or the other, will be May 19th. Is there a motion to adjourn at 819? Well, I'll make that motion. <laughs> okay. Wendy makes the motion to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second it. Second, Eileen. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you very much, everybody. It's a great a long meeting, I know, but it was a, a lot was covered. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you, Mitch. Thanks for all you do yeah. behind the scenes. Yeah. Oh. Nonstop. It's fun. Oh yeah. <laughs> Thank you. All right.